Hello, everyone. So next speaker after lunch, Michelangelo stage is Antonio Garcia Serrano, who's going to show us new trends on 360 video. Thank you, René. And thank you, everyone here. Um, thank you, Campus Party, and thank you, too, for inviting me to get another Campus Party for me. Really happy to be here with, with all of you. OK, so my talk is new trends on 360 degree video. Let me first introduce myself, uh, give a bit about my background. I'm Antonio Garcia Serrano. I am a PhD in computer graphics. Over for the last 10 years, more than 10 years, I've been working as an independent 360 degree imaging creator. I'm still doing my own background, though I work independently, as I said. You can find me on Twitter under Zacato360. And let me start by showing you a little example of some of the kind of things that I like doing, which is experimenting. This is a little 360 degree photo I did a few years ago. It's a 360 degree portrait, which was shot inside a computer. It's a Macintosh computer. So I put um, my iPhone inside the computer and shot this 360 degree photo. So that's the sort of thing I like doing. I like experimenting with new things. Don't just set up to the um, normal um, business kind of photos, but do my own research on, on, my, on my spare time. So what's 360 degree video? Um, Probably, we've already seen many 360-degree photos. Um, let me just stop this for the time being. Google, for instance, is using it a lot these days. Google Street View, Google Business Photos. So we're pretty used to 360 photo already. I find it pretty hard to explain what 360-degree video is. Because I tell people, 360-degree video is 360 photo, but you've got movement inside. But people, they see 360 photo, and since you can move it, it's interactive, immersive, they already think there is video. There's no video here at all. Let me just turn on the sound. So this is a 360 photo. I call this photo Campusera John Hall MacDoc. He's around here with us. And it shows the atmosphere of another campus party. This was in Valencia a couple of years ago. So we have a little plan there, we, we can choose the view. But there's no movement, so everything is static there. And I'll now load a video so we see the difference. With video, we add a new dimension. OK, up to here, it's a photo. 360 degrees, can move up and down, no movement, but I'm going to play it now. So we have movement. So it's actually a video, 360 degree video. So we add a new dimension. We have motion inside the, the interactive image. We don't anymore ca capture a frozen moment, but an action happening in the 360 all around. I want to talk now about interactive displaying, because I've mentioned the terms interactive, immersive. Why do we call these kind of images interactive? This applies both to photo and, and video. It's because we. The user is not anymore an, an spectator. The user is an active viewer. It decides the point of view. And it, ga it gains the prominence of the, of the action. OK? How, how can we do that? I mean, we, there are like several displaying possibilities these days. We can use the computer, as I've been like, using here, mobile devices. So we can just like, touch the screen and turn around. It, it will work fine on iDevices, on Android devices, tablets, mobiles. It's already working, it's, it's, it's good. Um, 
VR goggles is a is a is a new new thing that is 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 being developed now. So you can also wear one of the goggles and just stand around your head and and it will move. And a new thing that is 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 kind of like working out pretty nicely. Mostly in the states they, they have a, a lot of this is full dome cinema. So you can also display it in a full full dome cinema. And I'll show you a little video. I've been doing some work together with ICCI 360 from the University of Plymouth, and they have a dome projection system, which is basically a dome and you have a several projectors inside, so you project with the several projectors on, on top of the, of the spherical, of the dome, and you, you see the 360. In this case, you don't turn with your, with your mouse or with your hand, you turn your head, it's like being there. So this is a new trendy thing, and as I said, probably in a few years' time, once we've got enough 360 degree content, that would be a new way of displaying it. We lose some kind of interactivity here. I mean, when we see it on the computer, we can have a, a floor plan, we can have some other kind of information that can be accessed through hotspots over here, which is like there, and we turn around. Okay, so you get an idea of what a full dome system is. So as I said, with 360 degree imaging, if it's interactive, we take control of it. Another way of displaying 360 degree images is an artistic displaying. And I'll show you a few examples here. It's not any more interactive, but it's, it's cool. People like it. I'll show you first the interactive version. It's called Tip of the Port. It's a 360 video, video in, back at home in Spain. So we have the movement, as I said. It's not anymore a frozen moment. Over here, I take control. But we, know we, we could always display the same thing with different project, projections. Let us go, for instance, onto the little planet projection. So they call this sort of projection little planet. So it's a reprojection of the 360 degree into a different shape, but it's cool. So we got the ship coming down. So we have the sound, we have the waves now coming. These images, kind of images, little planets, inner walls are becoming quite common these days. I'm not sure if you've already seen some of this. And as I said, another possibility would be displaying it as an inner wall, which is an inverse reprojection of the same 360 degree image. So it's good fun. I don't know. You could maybe display this on, 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 an, on a screen and I have an interactive exposition rather than static images with video. And just to finish with this one, I'll show you the a standard rectangular projection. Well, not displaying good here, but anyway, you get the idea. So this is what we actually capture, and this is, this is our initial video. And from here, we convert into the little planet or inner wall. So how do we achieve 360 degree video? I mean, this is something similar to what happened with photography and cinematography. When we were able to capture a number of photos per second, then we, we, we had video. So in the last years, 360 photo has developed a lot. And eventually, we've managed to, to, to get those techniques that would allow us to record a next number of 
360 frames per second, and thus we have 360 degree video. And I'll go now into the capturing techniques, so you get a, a little idea about, about how it's done. There is no direct way of capturing a 360 degree image. There is no lens that can cover 360 degree. So how do we do that? Okay, We have two ways. One of the ways is a single shot shooting against a, a mirror. I'll show you an example now. And the common way what we most of us, most of us use is the multi-shot, which is shooting with a normal camera and taking several pictures. So we will take the camera, take several pictures, and put those together later on. So single shot, it's spherical mirrors. You can see here a setup for that kind of capturing. So it's basically a, a paraboloid mirror, and a load. So we have a paraboloid mirror that we stick in front of the lens. So in one single shot, we capture the whole 360 degrees. The processing of, well, I'll show you an example. Um, we did this a few years ago. This is how I started with my research on video. This is a, it's cheap, easy processing, but it's very limited in terms of quality. We don't get like the full sphere. We only get about like 120 in the vertical field of view. We have some issues with focusing, etc. But it's cool and it's easy. I'll show you a, an example. This is a, a video recorded during another campus party. So playing around with the funny shape recorded against the mirror, this was, this was directed by Diego Hurtado de Mendoza and Ruiz Straber, who are very well-known directors. So they saw the technique and they thought about a funny little video. Again, it's, it's a funny um, little planet shape. I'll show you the source image in a, in a minute. So the source of that video is this thing here. So the camera is pointing up and recording against the mirror, and this is what we get out of there. This is the source material. What we do to process this sort of image, if you see right in the middle, we've got a black hole and then we've got the outside. So we have to chop that off. That's why we have the limitation in the vertical field of view. If we process that to a rectangular image, we will get this. And these directors, they, they really like the idea that in 360 videos, you move that way and you come out on the other side. So artistically, that's funny. You can see the shadow of the setup. So you can see the, the, the lens. And this same video, we put it into a, an exposition last year here in England for the Olympics, moving around technology. This is the interactive version. This was displayed in a full dome theater. So you would just jump into the theater and turn around and see the, the whole thing. But you see, the quality is not that high. We are recording against a reflection we are only recording the whole picture with the lens, with, with, with one lens and one camera. So we're very limited in terms of, of, of size. It's still cool, still funny, so we have to kind of approach it that way. Look it on the funny way, but don't expect to get too much quality out of it. And as I said, I decide 
on the point of view here. So this is a limitation of this technique. Very low quality. You can even pretty cheaply buy one of these lenses for your iPhone. You stick it to the iPhone and you can record it. Things called 360 bubble, they call it. For 50, 50 quid, you can get one of those and start recording your, your own videos, but very limited in quality. So what's the other technique? to capture 360 degree frames. It would be the multi-shot, as I said before. So we will capture several pictures. So we eventually have a mosaic composition of several pictures. So the resolution will be much higher because we are, we are adding many pictures together. But we require an extra step, which is what, what technically is called a stitching. So we need to stitch those images together. The processing would be harder, but we can get fully spherical and high resolution. And I'll show you an example of how we, how we do that. So these are six pictures of Campusero, John Hall, Mac Dog. Fish eye images. That's why they're a li little bit distorted, but they're covering the, the, full, the full 360 degrees. So what I'm going to do is just to show you that it's not the stitching part. It doesn't necessarily need to be that complicated. I'll just throw those six images into a stitcher. This is a specialized software for stitching. And I'll say, align the images. And it will come up with this. So we already have a 360 degree frame. And I'll show you also, don't want to go too deep into into this, into this software. But for instance, these are the, the stitches. Those are the points. The software already matches those points. So this is the stitching. Beforehand, years ago, we have to do the stitching by hand. So this would take a long time. These days, you have this software. It does the stitching fast for you. So therefore, we can move into video. We can stitch several pictures per second, and the process would be good and fast. And I'll show you the resulting equirectangular frame. Oops. All right. That would be the result after the processing. So. Taking several pictures, shooting a mosaic of pictures, passing that through a stitching software, we can achieve already video. We can achieve, I mean, the primitive of video, which is the, the frame. How do we do that then? OK. There are several possibilities. We've had a lot, I mean, we have been a lot of developing, uh, developing on, on, on this. So new things coming out every week, really. I'll show you here one of the, the techniques that have been used for capturing 360 video. It's multi-cameras. So you can see here different cameras. So basically what we have is six, five cameras pointing at different directions. So we will capture the whole thing at once. And I'll show you some more examples of this. So you see that there is a lot going on here. GoPros are being used quite a lot these days. Small cameras, they can record quite high quality. So you can put six of those together, five, and start recording video. You'll need to stitch that, of course, but we can manage to capture it. We've these days, we, all cameras can record video. But as you can see, even Google. So 
So you see there's a lot of different approaches to capturing 360 video. What's my approach to capture 360 video then? Those cameras we've seen before, multi-cameras, they are expensive. They used to be quite expensive, not that much expensive these days. They're much more affordable, but still, you have to invest on that. And I couldn't afford to buy a multi-camera. And also, I'm very concerned about quality. As I said, I have the paraboloid mirror, but not good enough. So because of my background research, I decided with this system here, this is a photo camera that can record video, and I, I, I thought, why not using my, my experience capturing panoramic photos, do some research and development, and try if I could create high quality, fully spherical 360 degree video. So I developed my own proprietary technique for this which is basically using the software in an efficient way to manage to capture 360 degree video. And I like calling it 360 cinema, because the way it works and the way we have to record it, it resembles very much cinema. We need a scripting part, so we need to know what we're going to record. Then we need to capture the images, and the processing. So it resembles very much the way cinema has been recorded. And in the end, the most important thing with video is, is telling a story. So the scripting part becomes very important. I'll show you an example now. Why I want to also to record video. This is a... Um, a photo of a cook in her kitchen. It's a Michelin star cook, Susie Diaz from La Finca in Spain. So photo is very nice here, because you can capture the whole atmosphere of the kitchen. You can zoom in. But I thought, OK, in this sort of situation, I think movement could be pretty important, because you don't see only an static version but you see what's going on. So you really capture the atmosphere of the, of the kitchen. So I'm going to show you more or less with this example how I do my, my 360 videos, the scripting, the image capturing, and the image processing. So a scripting. With the scripting, I have to define how am I going to record the video. So what I did in this, in this example, I, I went there several times, moving to the place. I was given freedom to do whatever I want. So I said, OK, I think it could be nice to record a video where it says number one here, with some action going on there. I could tell my actors what to do. So basically, was setting up a dish there. Then on two, I would say, OK, do the normal stuff you do when cooking. We, with a photo, everything is there, but we don't like, really see the whole, the whole thing. Yeah? And number three, same thing. I would tell my actors at, different, at the different parts of the kitchen how to, what to do. I mean, just what they do normally, but more or less to make sure that I would capture the whole thing nicely. So this would be my script for, for this sort of recording. The capturing, I'll go fast through this. I will record one video in one position. So as I said, like number one, I will go like this and record. So instead of just taking a photo, I would just say record video. So we've got some action there for two and a half minutes for that first video. I'm explaining the way my, my technique really here. I'm not going to go too deep into all aspects, but at least you, you'll get the idea. This will be the second video.
on the third one. Okay, so that would be my source material, my story. I think I have to process that. So I would like do some processing with this, the stitching that I've like, shown you before. So with that, what I get, and I'm doing this from Photoshop. Photoshop is pretty nice for videos these days. So we have video. Okay, I would add a second video and a third one. Most of the time in 360 videos, the action happens at some parts of the image. So in my technique, I studied that. And the part that, that doesn't move, I just fix it as an static photo behind. So it's more efficient. Also, I'm capturing videos with a nice camera and lens. So the quality of those images is pretty high. And then I can play around with Photoshop as a normal, as a normal photo to enhance that. So this would be my final video. And I'll show you now the interactive version. So we've seen the photo before. Everything is static. We see the movement here, the atmosphere, which I think nicely captures how a kitchen works, this sort of kitchen. Lots of people, it's a team of people working together. And it's fully spherical. So we capture a full moment in time. Some more examples. Um, as I said, I'm very concerned about storytelling. So I've been trying to record in situations which I think are suitable for 360 video. 360 video is, is not valid for everything. Some occasions, we just need to use standard video. Detailed video, we just need a, uh, a normal video. We, we, we wouldn't need the, the, the ca to capture the, 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 the whole atmosphere. But I thought, OK, why not try it for cultural recordings? So this is a recording I did at my hometown. It's a UNESCO uh, wall heritage play. And I thought, OK, it makes sense to record 360 video here. So I asked for permission. Also interactive here. Rolling with interactive video as well is that we need to rep replicate the information. Because if we're turning, we will just meet th miss that. Also, give some clues. Some people just think it's normal video, so they, they won't move it. Possibly, it's the best possible way of being there without being there. This was a full production, so we recorded for different points. We did a lot of video editing in the end as well. You can zoom in out. Let's 
moving to another example. Other uses I'm giving to this kind of video, artistic. Um, similar to the thing that I did for the kitchen, there is this panoramic photographer in the States, and he, he's got this series of photographs where he goes to local artists and he would take a picture in their studios. So it's beautiful, because you see the, the guy holding the pencil in front of the canvas, and then you turn around and you see the pictures hanging. It's a nice thing, but I thought, okay, video could be also very good there, because you don't only see the guy holding the pencil, but you can see him moving. You can see, which is, I think, very important when you see an artist, the way that he does his work. So in this case, I contacted a local sculptor, and I thought, okay, let's do a funny video. So we, we went to, to his studio, recorded the studio, but I thought, okay, why don't you, we repeat yourself working at the different things you do during your, your, your day work? So he's actually assembling a statue there. and then doing his craft work on the other side. So again, we captured the whole thing, not only the, the place, but what's going on inside. Some other applications, tourism, in this case, Valencia, the city of art and sciences. So it's very nice to show a place as well. It's like being there. Promotional purposes is pretty much 360 degree video these days. They're using it a lot for advertising. So I thought about 360 adverts. Why not? Instead of having the typical video where you saw the facilities of a company and you just like move from plane to plane with standard video, why not try 360 video on it? All of these are very small productions, but I just want to show the idea that you can apply it to many different things. And as I said, you decide. I'm just going to follow this guy. This is Ifema in Madrid. You can see the atmosphere of, of, of the fair going on. I'll show you now another video. I'm also using these sort of videos for my home family scenes that I call. This is Years ago, we started having our first video cameras. So everybody was recording their kids and all these sort of like family moments. So I thought, okay, I'm the happy dad of a little boy. And when he was born, I thought, why not record? There was a guy that did a 360 photo of his, of his kid in hospital. And I thought, I'll do a video so I can remember in a few years' time I'll be able to show my little boy how was it when he was born and where we were in the hospital room there. So that was a, what I call a family moment. Nice family moment to remember. It's not a single picture, it's not a 360 photo, it's a 360 video. 
And I'm trying to apply this into some other like family celebrations. Sometimes I just like record the video. Hopefully in 15 years time, I'll be able to watch it as we watch now our grandfather's or parents' videos. Work in progress. With this technique, I've been trying to apply video to things which with the multi-camera, for instance, would, would not be possible. So I came with the idea of recording what I call a macro panoramic video. I had this in mind for some time, and I said, OK, I'll try it. So this is a video down the countryside. But the nice thing about this video is that you can look down, and you see an ant hole. So the camera was just one inch from the, from the, from the ant hole. And you can still look, that's a pony and the dog. So again, the, the, this video could have never been recorded with a multi-camera system, because the focusing, you cannot control the focusing as much as you can do with this camera. So this has a stuck focusing and all sort of like techniques. So it gives you a lot of freedom. Other research under development that I'm doing is using raw video recording. Again, it's one step forward in terms of quality. This camera doesn't record in raw. With raw, we get a, a, a larger uh, dynamic range on the picture. So again, it's, as I said, 360 cinema. I'm trying to pull out the quality up to to to, to top. So I'm doing that these days. I haven't yet put one of those together. Hopefully, I'll do soon. And I'm using Magic Lantern is a hack for the camera that allows you to record video directly in, in raw format. Just to finish with some conclusions, 360 video is a new technique. It's under development. So as I said, new things coming out every week. We need to push it forward. It's already one step forward, I think, an important step forward to displaying places. We don't only capture the place, we capture also the action. But it's not good for everything. It has to, people think, OK, this will substitute a traditional video. No, same thing as with 360 photo. It doesn't substitute. It's a complement. It works in parallel. In some occasions, you would need to use 360 video, some others traditional video, same with photo. Timings are very important as well. You don't want to be watching a 360 video for an hour and rotate for an hour. Probably for that kind of video, you just need a standard one where someone does it for you. So I'm very concerned about that, selecting the proper timings so that what we record looks nice but doesn't get boring. And we need one last comment here is that we need 360 degree content creators because the people that are working on 360 video these days, most of us are technical guys that have to move into the content creation side, but we are not pure directors of, three, of, of movies. So we need those people to come and understand the technology and help us develop it to, to something like bigger, yeah? Because in the end, it's all about contents. We have to tell a story. We need to tell something, think about it, script it nicely. So what we come out with is something good. So one last thing is as we've already done in other campus parties, we, we want to record some video here. So we're asking for your collaboration. So I will be recording. I'm here till Saturday. And I will be recording some 360 video of the event. So if you want to join me and like kind of get deeper into the technique, feel free to contact me. You can reach me. Through, uh, uh, email, sakata360 at gmail, or, or on Twitter. Just drop me a line, and, and we can come after the, the talk, and we'll get in contact. And, and I will be doing that. So uh, as we did with uh, other uh, videos, I normally try to put those into conferences or other things. So it's nice. We, we can do a collaborative project. 
that is made by all of us. So feel free to come afterwards. And, and that's basically it. Thank you for, for your time. If you've got any questions, I'll be really happy to, to answer those. Thank you. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, please, how can you stitch video in Photoshop? How can you? Stitch videos. You don't stitch the videos in Photoshop. You, uh, in Photoshop, what I do is put them together. Ma and mask it, uh, so... Yeah, you, what's nicely about Photoshop is that you can do the masking directly. But the video is processed, the individual frames are processed on the stitcher beforehand. Ah, okay. Thank you and then much. once they are in, in Photoshop, they are already in position, let's say. Ah, okay. I, I understand it. Thank you. Hello. Uh, at first, thanks for interesting uh, presentation. Thank I you. have a question about the sound layer. Uh, if I let me tell if I'm right. Uh, let's speak about uh, the video from the kitchen. Uh, you make three videos, each in different time. Yeah. Which sound layer you use? Depends. There's always a lead video which in that case was the, the cook. But then I use the background sound from the other videos and blend those together into one single sound. Yeah. Maybe this would be a next step, uh, localization of audio sources. So that when you move the picture, the audio source is also moving. It can be done already. So you can have that. You can use directional sound. So that's, as I said, we have what, what is called, in, when we program this sort of, it's the same thing as with photo. We, we can have hot spots and we can have directional sound. So you can just tell the software while you rotate on this area, play this sound. Then when you come out of this angle, play this other sound. So you can play around with all that. And do you know Iozono? Sorry? Iozono sound technique. It's uh, a German produced sound techniques with some many uh, loudspeakers and there's a special system and you, you, you stay and you can localize every source. And maybe for, for such a big projection, it's, it's, it would be a good place. I mean, yeah, I mean, this, I don't know that one in particular, but I know they're doing 360 degree sound as well, which blends nicely with the 360 degree image. And as, uh, and as I said, we need people to bring ideas into 360 degree video because it's developing. And, and it's like storytelling is pretty complicated with, with 360 video. If you are inside a dome, for instance, and you're displaying a 360 and you're watching a 360 video, you might be looking at that direction, but the action might be happening there. So how do you let the, the user or the, or the viewer know? It's like being here. If you hear a noise at your back, you might just turn around. Otherwise, you just like, face that direction. So that's one important thing with the storytelling and, and 360. We need to decide on the technique and see how we write the script so the story, you can tell the story. You don't want the spectator to miss what you want to tell. And sound could be a nice also for those sort of things. Okay. We were thinking about, uh, how do you think about uh, putting together 3060 video uh, with another interactive gadget like uh, Oculus Rift or something? Yeah, I, I didn't mention, but I, I had it like, well, I'm not sure if I mentioned, one of the, the ways of displaying video, and, and that is something very new. I'm following that with great interest. I don't have the Oculus Rift myself. I'll try to find someone here with one of those, because they're using it for, for, for 360 video, yeah? It's just, it has to be very nice. You just stick the Googles and you just, turn around and it has to be great. I'm, I know people are already experimenting with that and it's working. So I'll try to find a Campusero with one of those and see if we can try it on. Yeah, yeah we, we know him, so we can put it. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. One last thing, as I said, if you want to join me on some recordings, come to me. 
you know, if you see me around during campus party and I'm doing like some kind of recording or anything, come to me. Okay, thank you, thank you.